All right, this one is called the Anywave Shutdown Situation Explained by Mr. Azratha HS, a dude that actually has a lot of ReZero content. I think I was recommended this guy's channel, but I think a lot of it is light novel stuff. But hey, let's see what he has to say about the whole pirate situation right now. You've probably already heard the news that has more or less shaken the anime piracy scene. Some of the biggest yep. streaming sites have been taken down completely. And if you go to... An <sighs> this is mine. This is mine to go, man. I don't really use streaming sites. I like to have a local file so I can, you know, uh, go through each second, each frame of the video, you know, when I'm reacting. But NXTO was a very nice website. It had a very great UI. Just clean, nice. Community was nice. Comments were there. Felt, felt really great. Thank you, Simba, for the sub, man. Anyway, you'll see a message talking about how long it's been and how proud they are of the work they've done, but it's time to go. And they tack on a message at the very end telling you to use legal paid services. <laughs> Anywave was by far the most popular and most expansive streaming site with probably And remember Anywave, NXTO, all of these different sites that all got taken down together Well, not every one of them, but most of them are under the same database It's just different reskins The backend where they're sourcing the videos from is the identical, like Anywave, Annex But they're all the same group, therefore if one, you know, source gets taken down That's why it looks like three websites went down because of that Hundreds of thousands, if not millions of users and probably the largest catalog of over 12,000 anime. Now, let's not mince words here. We knew the risks. Of course. Platforms like Anywave or any other platform that I will not mention the name of just in case were sites that existed to circumvent paid streaming services and did violate multiple big companies' copyright. Thank you, Sima, for the gifted. Shutting down wasn't a matter of if, but when. And this is the company's attempts to stop this piracy. However, but remember, you cut the head of one Hydra off, 10 more are going to grow. From the chibi video that we watch, right? If these companies truly want these things to stop happening, it's not a matter of going in and, you know, doing copyright strikes. That's not going to solve the problem. All you're doing is poking a hole in a dam where there's so many more holes that's going to open up later. What you have to do is provide a better service. It's not this, you know, $5, $10 fee, the entrance of barrier that's, you know, sh putting away people from buying your service on Crunchyroll, Netflix, whatnot, and going out to different streaming sites. No, the different streaming sites offer a better experience. If you provide the user with a better convenient experience than these pirate sites, then people will pay the money. It's a service issue at the end of the day. There is a quote that a lot of you are probably already familiar with, especially if you are deeply entrenched in anime, gaming, or music communities. Gabe Newell, the co-founder and president of Valve, the company that created the biggest video game distribution platform yep. ever, had this to say about piracy. The easiest way to stop piracy is not by putting anti-piracy technology to work, it's by giving those people a service yep. that's better than what they're receiving from the pirates. Like, in the internet, you can't get rid of shit. Like, piracy is always gonna happen. It's just, just like a... Almost like a fucking Newton's like fourth law of physics or something. You know there's only three, but you can't combat piracy by trying to shut these guys down. Gabe is right. You got to give them a better service. Entice people with a better service, a better product to the point where people want to swipe their credit cards because the value proposition is that good. And as we watch multiple anime and manga sites get taken down, we have to sit back and think about one question. Mm -hmm. What do the legal paid anime sites do better than the pirate sites? What do they do better? Straight up. You guys with Crunchyroll accounts, Netflix accounts, whatever. High, la high Dive, Hulu, whatever. What does that offer you? Better than a pirate site. Maybe sometimes better subs. I doubt it. Even the subs on fucking Crunchyroll and them. You see what's going on with the woke localizers interjecting their own opinions and trying to stray away from the source material because they have their own agenda to push. Sometimes Crunchyroll just fucks up the subs. The most recent Tower of God episode? Those subs were placed on last week's episode. Remember that one? Where Emily was leaked in advance and people were like, what the fuck? The subs aren't even making sense. Like, these paid services are also taking away features. Like, the comment section. Remember? Crunchyroll taking away the comment section is due to the last straw breaking with a lot of homophobic comments happening in that one yaoi anime. Like, not only is the value proposition worse, it's like actively taking away these different, you know, features that exist. So it's just like, hmm, you're telling me that I can either swipe my credit card and pay money for a shitty service, or I can simply search 
watch this anime for free and I get 10 separate fucking lists on Google that's gonna offer me a better service? It's a no fucking brainer. Maybe it's easier to ask what they don't do better. First, if you want to engage in legal anime consumption- <laughs> Leak anime? <laughs> True. <laughs> Crunchyroll leaking. <laughs> Going to Suba early. Da, da, no, Dan da, Dan was Netflix shit. Yeah, yeah, they, they leaked early. They leaked pretty early. But our pirate sites also get the leaks early too. Let's take a look at your options. High dive? Well, if you're using- Fuck high dive, bro. What do they do? They just opened up services in different countries and then immediately canceled them, right? I forget exactly which area it was, but high dive, bro. It's like they just shut their services off in different places. Of course they're going to pirate. Using an app that people are complaining about right now having a drastically downsized scope that stopped servicing non-English speaking countries. And mm -hmm. people are speculating how long the site even has left. Well, maybe we don't want to use that one. How about Netflix or Amazon? Well, then you're running into an issue of an extremely limited catalog. How about Funimation? Oh, Does it even exist oh, anymore? <laughs> well, I guess it's Crunchyroll or nothing. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that when people imagine the ideal platform, Crunchyroll is what comes to mind. Hell no. You could argue that Crunchyroll has the benefit of supporting industry workers like trans- if you think that like your subscription, your monthly subscription is somehow going to the actual pockets of people that make anime, there's no way, right? There's no way. I now, how do I know, right? I'm capping right now. This is just my opinion, but I really, really doubt that your service for Crunchyroll, the, the amount you're paying is actually going to the pockets of people that matter. At the end of the day, None of that shit really matters, right? Even if DVD sales really went well, what happens? The corporations, the producers, the upper management decision makers, they take the money and the animators get left with fucking scraps. Which are localizers, because now that it's a paid and official service, the people doing this work can actually get paid for the work they do if they weren't horribly underpaid. With mm -hmm. all the reports giving translators $80 exactly. per episode. And you can find out more about this in my other videos. Oh, we might have to watch this video too. It's still $80 per episode. It's still impossible to live as a Crunchyroll translator. Or you could also watch this video by the Canapa Effect. All right. I'll link in the description. You I'm interested in that, that video. It has the benefit of propping up the dub industry, you know, making it more accessible than ever before. Is it accessible? Wait, wait, what kind of industry? Hold up. The dub industry, you know, making it more. The dub industry? Hold up. Description. You could argue that it has the benefit of propping up the dub industry, you know, making it more accessible than ever before. If Crunchyroll wasn't partaking in anti-union activities by- Oh, what? Kyle McCarley may not star in Mob Psycho 103 anime. So this is the English dub side. Due to disagreement with Crunchyroll about union dubs. So it hasn't made abundantly clear to me that in the case of season 3 of Mob Psycho, Crunchyroll is not going to be producing a show. So they're anti-union, there's some sort of unions for English speaking, uh, sorry, English voice actors? Firing beloved voice actors for fighting for more pay, and Damn. also paying voice actors for films, sometimes as low as $150, despite films like Jujutsu Kaisen Zero grossing over $30 million in the United States. That's just the fucking disparity, bro, the gap between people the talents putting in work and then the people that's just making you know money at the very top is so so fucked up and with the advent of ai i totally see where voice actors i mean you've seen hollywood going on strike right the writer skill that was like a a while ago but there is this um <laughs> there is this precedence of ai taking over and just record just basically feeding off of existing voice actors models and being able to just voice act without the actual human there by using AI technology, I can 100% see a future where anime corporations will start doing that. It states, You could argue that Crunchyroll has the benefit of a well-designed platform as they can hire professional designers and engineers to support it. Just don't go to the Crunchyroll subreddit and find a wealth of people mad about everything. <laughs> Dragon Ball yep. Z dub has no subs. Why are English subtitles so wrong? Out of sync subtitles. Yeah, this shit happens over and over again. It's just been, and it's not even just like a one-time thing either. Like it's a common occurrence on Crunchyroll. You guys keep deleting my wish list. Only Japanese audio not working. Please make quality of life changes to this platform. Can't access account. App so slow. And that you just have this guy down here screaming. Things aren't going well. And do you know why Crunchyroll doesn't fix their shit? Because they think they can get away with it. In the market of capitalism, innovation is possible when there's competition, 
right? Other competitors show up and they provide a better experience and people want to buy that service. And then, you know, Crunchy will then see that and be like, shit, we need to pick up our game. But see what's happening? The only competitors are just pirated sites. So Crunchyroll doesn't have to make their product better. They can just go around and just, you know, strike them down, right? Now, I'm not saying it's Crunchyroll specific that did that, but I'm saying in this ecosystem where there is hardly any competitors, especially legal ones, it's not really in Crunchyroll's, like, best interest right now to, like, make their product better when they can just get away with just milking the audience with what they have. They pretty much have a monopoly over this, and this is what you're going to get, man. You could argue that Crunchyroll could be used to foster a sense of official community. <laughs> yeah, sure. Without comments anymore, I'm sure that's going to work. But now Crunchyroll has removed yep. comments from their website. Not to say that anime comments are the peak of intellectual thought and the circumstances that led to them removing the comments is... No, of course not, right? But the comments definitely do provide an experience or users using their products to feel like they have a community, right? Of course everyone's just gonna post dumbass fucking comments in the anime comment section. But at the very least, it makes you feel connected with the people that's also using the service, that's watching the anime you enjoy together. That's all part of the experience. Pretty unfortunate, but it's an element that is now gone for good. Yeah. You could argue that you feel much more safe with your data uh, going to a big <laughs> corporation. <for> <laughs> no, man. <laughs> They leak and that's in the security breaches. Rather than some private owner of a pirate website. <laughs> yeah. Though I don't know if anyone would ever actually say that, especially with Crunchyroll in 2022, yep. knowingly violating the Video Privacy Protection Act and selling their consumers personally identifiable information without wah, express wah. consent from consumers to advertisers. Your biggest legal alternative is a platform riddled with technical issues of workers' abuse, getting into its own data scandals, and one that regularly raises its prices outside of what people are willing to pay as it acts actively hostile to the consumer and the industry it claims to support. So, when you think of the Gabe Newell quote listed earlier, yep. you don't have to wonder why anime piracy is so popular. As Remember, it's a service issue. Simply provide a better experience, but the experience that we have right now are limited to Crunchyroll and other mediocre fucking platforms. The value proposition does not make sense. Everyone's just gonna fucking pirate. Especially when you remember that anime in the West is an industry that started because of illegal fan subs. Crunchyroll used to be a pirate site, right? And then they turn legal. Something Crunchyroll knows very well because that is how their website started, as they used to... <laughs> what is this ad? TrueSwords.com Anime and video game swords, all metal full size. Visit TrueSwords.com <laughs> Just a bunch of weebs wanting katana collection, they go to the website and they buy fake swords. Steal fan subs to put on their platform. Because anime in the West has always largely been an issue of accessibility and affordability. Yep. So while companies like to pretend that piracy is a new sweeping issue of the internet era, Hell it's no. the same thing that has always been the case for this. Yes, right? It just happens to be the year 2024. This shit was pa happening just long, long time ago, right? And just because like Annex TO and they went down this time doesn't mean it's not going to happen again, right? New competitors are going to show up from the ashes. The Phoenix shall rise once more. And later on, they will get shut down too. But then more will scatter and then more will grow until the day that they fix this service issue at the root cause. Simply, a, you know, patching a bandaid over the symptoms, that's not going to that's not going to solve the problem. It's medium. Now, I would be remiss to not include the fact that we don't actually know for sure if Annie Wave was hit with a cease and desist. If you look at the posts made by the Annie Wave moderation staff here, they weren't told why the site was shut down and have almost no contact with the admins or the staff. Well, it's probably in their best interest to not share too much legal information, right? It's probably, you know, they're trying to... I mean, if you read the summary, right, their goodbye letter, it's basically saying, you know, from the beginning, we've been always we've been always trying to make the best product possible, right? Trying to innovate and give our users the best experience. But that's it, man. Goodbye. Obviously, it's not in their best interest. For potential more lawsuits, they can't say that shit. My personal speculation is that them pimping out these legal paid sites here at the end of their goodbye message kind of sends a clear sign that they were shut down. But again, mm -hmm. that's just my speculation. Most likely. And we don't actually know for sure what happened until we find legal documents or someone speaks out. Uh, there is also speculation that this Manga Plus survey right here oh. by Shueisha is part- Oh yeah, I, I saw this. Basically, in this survey, there's a feel at the very bottom saying, 
Do you watch anime online for free? If so, please tell us the website. Really responsible because as you can see, uh, they ask, how often <laughs> do you read on pirate sites? <laughs> <laughs> you to list the pirate sites. But here's the thing, uh, Goo Goo Gaga babies, they snitch without realizing because they're just dumb kids and I don't really blame them. <laughs> but damn, bro. Um, while I'm sure this didn't help, it's not as if- I mean, I highly doubt that this survey is the final thing that broke the last straw on the camels. No way. It's not random fucking kids saying, Oh, my favorite website is NXTO. No way. They already probably knew it. It's not like these are super secret sites. They're not, right? It's kind of in the public. Now, people aren't going to go out of their way to try to find these sites, but it's not like this is super discreet shit. Like... I would imagine most industry insiders are very aware of all the sites that do exist. Anywave is a massive name in the anime piracy industry. And also this service, and also this survey started just last week and isn't even over. Mm, I think that this is just a coincidence. I refuse to believe that if a 14 year old kid can just go online and try to find their favorite animes for free and has a like 10 list of anime websites that they use, I refuse to believe that fucking million, billion dollar corporations don't know how to figure this shit out. No shot. Yet. I don't think there's any relation. What's more likely is that the ACE is oh? partly responsible. Alliance for Creativity and Entertainment, ACE, is a garbage, co <laughs> garbage coalition which over 30 major global entertainment companies and film studios aimed at protecting corporate profits from copyrighted material. Oh, I hate the ACE then. Or the Alliance for Creativity and Entertainment, a coalition of 30 companies aimed at protecting copyright. Garbage coalition. I don't know <laughs> the person who edited this wiki, but garbage coalition. As you can see. I had to take a screenshot of the Wikipedia page <laughs> when I opened it for this video. It was already vandalized, you know, is a garbage coalition. Yeah. The stated mission of ACE is to ruin anime watchers' lives. And if you scroll down, you can see that among its members, it's got some extremely relevant companies. You have yeah. Aniplex, Sony, Crunchyroll, Amazon, Hulu, sure. Netflix, and a lot of others. And if you look through subpoena records... You'll find that a subpoena was filed to Tonic Domains Corporation by oh. the Motion Picture Association. Oh, this is getting fucking sweaty. Filed in September 7, 2023. Where are we going with this? A company that supported the launch of the prior mentioned ACE. And this was filed on September 7th, 2023. And the and a subpoena implores them to hand over information to identify the alleged infringers of certain copyrighted materials. Okay. If you are unaware, the Tonic Domains Corporation is a company that sells the very popular .to domain, the one used oh. for like half of pirate sites nowadays, including places like Anywave. That's what the .to is. I was always wondering, like, you know, it's like .com, .c, everyone has their own different shit, and then most of the anime, you know, at the end was like .to. I'm like, hmm, Tonic Domains Corporation, it's their domain, and Motion Pictures Association is suing this shit. .to is the domain. Maybe sue isn't the right word, but, you know, we are the defendant and the plaintiff is Motion Pictures Association. Main for the nation of Tonga. And Tonga? this company exists in California. <laughs> what the fuck? The kingdom of Tonga? First time I hear this shit. Thus was under U.S. jurisdiction when it came to copyright infringement. Okay. Because of this, you can actually find a shit ton of subpoenas towards them. Uh, from the Motion Picture Association. If you just look at the California filings here, there are a ton of subpoenas here. And let's just think of all of the resources going into gathering the personal information of the people who Whoa. run these sites to take them down instead of, like, making your site not suck asshole. All you Thank can you. Really do is sit back and agree with the message sent by Gabe Newell all those years ago. That if you want to stop piracy, you should divert Service. resources to make your platform better rather than take out the competition. Yes. And while this will be a bump in the road to a lot of pirates, it's probably not even going to change anything. So nope. all this money is being spent on nothing but ruining. Exactly. What are they doing? Because like, okay, you took some websites down. But like, there's like 20 separate other websites and more ones that's going to come out because of this shit. So what? Is this just charades? Surely they're not just trying to waste money. Maybe they are that ignorant. They think that this is the only pirate sites. No way. I refuse to believe they're that stupid. They know. They gotta be aware, right? 
even if you think that like these corporations make dumb decisions, no, at the end of the day, everything is data driven. They wouldn't just randomly waste money like this unless they thought it was productive. So is this like a then what? A fucking warning call? They think that they're bluffing so that, hey, we took these guys down. Other sites, you better be aware. Is it like that kind of campaign? Uh, I don't know. Many people's lives. I'm sure a lot of you guys use pirate sites, and I'm also sure that there's a reason for that. If you had ever used a site like Anywave in the past, feel free to leave a comment explaining why you use Salute. that something like Crunchyroll or High Dive, so we can really send home the issue with services in the industry that is notable for lacking it. That's about all I have to say, though. I just wanted to report on the takedowns, give my perspective, and explain why the legal sites aren't cutting it. This Thank is you really so much cool. for watching. If you like this video, please no, no, this video is definitely the same topic as you know the chibi video we watched, but more different in trying to find actual details of like I don't know the subpoenas and different sides involved. But at the end of the day, just remember, right? These pirate sites exist because of a service issue. If you simply provided a better experience through Crunchyroll, people would want to spend money rather than you know get free ex uh, anime online at a worse experience, right? Make your service better. But with the monopoly that Crunchyroll pretty much has right now, they have no real incentive to do so, right? Why make their product service better when there's no other competitors except fucking pirate sites? And I know that Crunchyroll specifically probably didn't strike them down, but at the end of the day, even if these pirate sites go down, just remember, right? Cut the head of a one Hydra, you get like 10 other shit coming out, and this is gonna continue until Gabe Newell's prophecy has been fulfilled, which is, provide a better service but i don't think that's gonna happen this is just gonna be a reoccurring theme throughout the next five years or so i guarantee you more anime websites are gonna go down but more new ones are gonna come up and at the end of the day remember so you fix the root cause these symptoms these simple you know uh, bandage symptoms it's not gonna solve shit but hey please go give mr adrata a h h s a sub like this channel if you haven't I'm scared to sub because there's a lot of ReZero content that I might be spoiled up because of the uh, thumbnails. But hey, we'll be checking out some other videos as well. Bye-bye.